Hi, I'm Dr. Ragini. I'm a fertility consultant from the Sikindrabad branch 49. Now I want to discuss regarding the uterine causes causing infertility. So why first of all what is uterus? Uterus is a highly vascular and muscular structure where the embryo grows there for nine months. So any pathology in this causes abnormalities, any abnormalities and pathologies in this disturbs the growing fetus. So we will talk about in detail what are the pathologies more common seen in the uterus. So first thing uh, how we can describe is uterus has three layers outer layer serosa, middle layer myometrium and the inner layer is the mucosal. So outer serosal surface is the surface which is facing inside the abdomen cavity. So any conditions like fibroids or any infections where there causes a uterine adhesions will uh, causes the pathologies in the outer layer of the uterus. The middle layer is the myometrium. Myometrium is the layer where it is highly muscular and lot of blood vessels passes through this myometrial layer. Uh, most common pathological conditions what we see in the myometrium is the fibroid, adenomyosis. Fibroid is the one is a growth of the myometrial structures within the inside the muscular layer. These fibroids can be anywhere. It can be outside the uterus, middle layer of the uterus or they can be in the inner layer of the uterus. Sometimes this middle layer of the fibroids pushes the cavity also that causes cavity distortion that will also harm the growing the fetus. Inner layer is the zero, uh, mucosal surface. Mucosal surface is the growing endometrium which sheds every month during the menses. Any pathologies in the inner layer, the mucosal layer causes the defect in the growth of the embryo. What are the conditions uh, arising from the inner endometrial layer is the polyps, fibroid indenting the cavity or ashermans or sinicae or normal endometritis is the infection. So we will come in detail of the each one. First one is the polyp. Polyp is any growth of the mucosal surface. It depends whether where is the polyp, situation of the polyp, size of the polyp and uh, where exactly is it present during the time of the embryo transfer. So polyps keeps on growing like in uh, starting of the cycle they shed during the menses sometimes they recur. So any recurrent polyp and which is larger in size and almost situated near the fundus of the uterus need to be intervened like we do a hysteroscopic polypectomy and remove the polyp which is most if it is in the fundus of the uterus. Fundus is the place where the embryo starts growing, first condition. Second is the fibroid. Any fibroid which is indenting the cavity, what I mean to say is that if there is distorting, this is the small area where the embryo grows. So if this fibroid pushes the cavity, means there is a smaller space inside the cavity, so the internal environment of the cavity is again distorted. So fibroids indenting the cavity has to be removed. Third one is endometritis where there is a patchy uh, hyperemic areas and there are micro polyps seen in endometriotis. In this condition we just have to give a course of antibiotics to suppress the infection and then do the embryo transfer. Other most commonly seen in a lower socioeconomic status is the Ashermans. Ashermans is nothing but uh, highly uh, infective tuberculosis which infects the endometrium crosses the entire endometrium is uh, uh, 
entire endometrium starts involving in the infection and the growth of the endometrium doesn't happen because the basal layer of the endometrium which actually starts proliferating every cycle is affected. So in these cases when the endometrium when there is a TB affected to the endometrium so we need really hard to remove the additions within the cavity to make the cavity look normal and the space should be created and also large number of uh, uh, doses of hormones should be given to make the endometrium look normal. Okay. Next coming to the myometrium, in this most common condition what we see is the adenomyosis. What is adenomyosis is when the endometrium actually has to be in the inner layer of the uh, uh, uterus sometimes it places within the myometrial layers that is the adenomyosis. The so growth of the endometrial tissue inside the myometrium is adenomyosis. What really happens in adenomyosis is the uterus becomes large and bulky and uh, it lo loses its normal echo texture and it becomes so very much un. Uh, Un, uh, what do I say? Uh, the environment created by adenomyosis is not so friendly for the growing embryo because it releases lots of reactive oxygen species because uh, the ROS, the environment in the uterus is so much hampered that the uh, endometrial lining sometimes uh, doesn't give up very well or the endomyo junction is lost. So for all these conditions also the ent entire the myo uh, the environment of the endometrium is again disturbed. We have certain very good medical treatment for adenomyosis. What actually we do in adenomyosis is we give a long course for two to three months of hormonal injections so that the normal uh, uh, myometrium uh, comes back by suppressing the adenomyosis within the myometrium and any of the fibroids which is inside the myometrial layer if it is not hampering the cavity it is not distorting the cavity can be left aside but for intramyometri intramyometrial fibroids when they are at the fundus of the uterus sometimes cause the microenvironment is again disturbed within the cavity so those have to be intervened any conditions where outer serosal layer is disturbed we can see to that they can be slowly and steadily uh, look into because any fibroids, large fibroids at the serosal surface need not be required for early intervention. And, uh, and cervical causes, cervical erosion, cervical infections first should be treated and then uh, again started for small course of antibiotics can be given and again started for infertility. Sometimes even them all looks normal there is something called as congenital anomalies of the uterus where there are two uterus like when you have a one cavity they have two cavities that is biconate uterus and sometimes there is something called as septum which arises from the center of the fundus extending up till the middle of the cavity or up till the lower down this is the septate uterus these two conditions should can be easily diagnosed with a very uh, equipped 3d ultrasound machine uh, both have to be independently treated because in septate uterus what commonly we see is recurrent abortions. In these patients we have to do a luteal phase 3D scan to see whether how exactly is the septum coming, the, up till what extent is the septum coming and if there is already a history of two or three abortions in them then uh, it can be because of this septum. So now we can go ahead and plan for hysteroscopic septal dissection means we no need to do any laparoscopic or incision is not kept on the abdomen from lower down a small pen size camera is inserted and the septum is removed. So in those cases uh, we can correct the uterine conditions. Why is the septum causing abortions is because the septum is very thin muscular band 
does not give so much support to the growing fetus when it is embryo is coming and attached to the septum so when it attached to the fundus only it grows up to up till the required nine months but when it it comes and attaches to the septum the growth is hampered because the nourishment to the fetus is compromised so in all this condition we have to rule out where exactly is the cause and treat accordingly and then give the better success so any queries regarding uh, infertility can please come to us for further management. Thank you.